Can men menstruate? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This is a scary question. Yes. Yes. I would say yes. No. No. What do you think? <laughs> no. Yeah. I'd yeah. say so. We're not gonna answer the question. Why is that? I feel like you're you're trying for us to say something controversial, but we're not gonna get involved. Is it okay, so it's a controversial question? I don't know. Can men menstruate? Talking about Fuck no baby! <laughs> And men, what? No, no. Get it, period. No, what? <laughs> Are you man, we not, we don't think like that. And it's only two genders. For all these young people, it's somehow controversial to answer a simple human biological question. Wow, unbelievable. You want to be non-gender, non-binary? No, not non-gender. But, but what's the difference? Well, you keep talking about gender neutrality, and yeah. it's not like I go around telling people that I'm gender neutral. There's, there's no lack of of anything. I just define as non-binary, so I, I. I refuse to to be to identify myself as male or female. I just think that non-binary issues aren't going to go away, so it's either you get on board or, you know, we end so up get looking... on board with how many, how many people are we... In terms of a proportion we don't know. of the population? That's the thing. You know, a lot of people, you know, what does non-binary look like? That's We're here to kind of show you that actually gender expression and gender identity are two different things, and non-binary people aren't just okay. wearing paper bags. Let me give you another hypothetical. Yesterday we interviewed a, a guy from a police force in the family. They've gone gender neutral, made a point of saying that. Um, I said to him, okay, what about if criminals decide to be gender neutral? And so when they're convicted, they do not want to be put in a male or female prison. Do we now have to build prisons for non-binary criminals? It's a very interesting question. What's the answer? I don't know if I have the answer to that. Scott Smith, whose 15-year-old daughter was in a bathroom by a boy wearing girls' clothes, and the Loudoun County School Board covered it up because it would have interfered with their transgendered policy during Pride Month. And that man, Scott Smith, because he went to a school board and tried to defend his daughter's rights, was condemned internationally. Do you apologize to Scott Smith and his 15-year-old daughter, Judge? Anyone whose uh, child was raped is uh, the most horrific crime I can imagine, and is certainly entitled and protected by the First Amendment to protest to their school board about that. But he was cited by the school board association That's fine, as a domestic not... terrorist, which we now know that letter and those reports were the basis for your judgment. No, this, this, no, is, Senator, this is wrong. shameful. Judges, that's, is shameful. This, here, this testimony, your directive, your performance is shameful. That's not but, true. Thank God you are not on the Supreme Court. You that's should resign in disgrace, Judge. Yeah, no, you just support the genocide of trans kids and you want ever, everyone who's poor to die? Yeah, no, that you do. That is such an assumption. It's such an assumption, right, with all of this <laughs> Right. What is anti-trans on the table? <laughs> Your TPS, TPUSA, you dumb <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I will actually. Ah, hey, I, I have it on camera. Yeah, hey. You see how he tried to be all feminine at the beginning, but then he quickly turned into like male mode. Like all the testosterone just came out at once, didn't it? He couldn't hold it in. Anyway, check this. That's not very really ladylike, sir. What a violent man. Psychiatric hospital needed. Yeah, we, we know, everyone knows, but for some reason, it is still getting pushed. I don't know why, whatever. You know, human rights situation in parts of Africa and including in your own country. You yourself gained worldwide attention a few years ago when you said there was, quote, no room for homosexuality in Kenyan society. I wanna know whether you still stand by that. We have um, Kenyan law, we have Kenyan constitution, we have our tradition, we have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I am very clear, I am very clear that we respect everybody and what they believe in, but we also have what we believe in and we expect to be respected for what we believe in. One of the major issues, and it's a holdover from sort of colonial Victorian, is the issue of sexual preference in many African countries. In Kenya, to be gay, the LGBT community is, is illegal. They just want to have equal rights, the same privacy and equality as all other Kenyans do. Is that something that you aspire to for your country? I want to be very clear. Uh, Christiana, uh, there is 
I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. So he's basically saying homosexuality is not agreeable. You've just said that you're kind of trying to thread the needle, that the law says one thing, but you respect everybody's rights. Will a Ruto administration crack down, like many other leaders in Africa, on the homosexual LGBTQ community? Or will you allow them their human rights and their civil rights? That is a age-old media trick. She's trying to get the current president to disagree with the old Kenyan president. That's what they do. They try to get them to have certain differences where they disagree and then they, they become divided and then when people become divided, that's when they can conquer. But he doesn't fall for it, yeah? Check his response. I think on that subject, President Kenyatta was spot on. We do not want to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is not a, a big issue for the people of Kenya. When the people of, when it becomes a big issue for the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya will make a choice. As it is now, we are grappling with five million young people who do not have jobs, four million people who are hungry, and that is my concern. That is the focus of the people of Kenya at the moment. When the issue you have discussed about homosexuality and the rights of LGBT will come, the people of Kenya will make a choice and we will respect the choice of the people of Kenya. All right, you see that? Try to manipulate him. He didn't fall for it. He basically said, we've got bigger problems that the actual people want us to solve. But if you actually think about it, the Western world has loads of problems as well that for some reason they don't want to solve them. They're more interested in focusing on a small minority of people who are making a lot of noise trying to push their woke ideology. I actually saw this the other day. You're not going to believe this. It says labor to jail people who use wrong gender pronouns on purpose under hate crime law. Purposely calling someone by the wrong gender pronoun could lead you in jail. <laughs> of up to two years as it may be treated as a hate crime under a Labour government. I mean, this is insane. So can I just identify as a cat? And then if I misgender someone, you can't send me to prison because you can't send cats to prison. Like, this is the same logic that they're using, so why can't I use it? But this is what a lot of these politicians are focused on, and now they're trying to force their agenda on places like Kenya. And they just assume that they want to push the same radical ideology because that's what it is you know what i'm saying kenya probably sees what's going on in america seeing males using female toilets and men going to all women prisons and all the lgbtq and they're trying to push all this weird gender stuff on the kids and they're like no fuck that a high school student in canada has been arrested for declaring that men and women are different josh alexander attended st joseph's high school catholic high school in renfrew ontario he was barred from school from the grounds for saying that god created two genders when he showed up for class police arrested him you can see it on your screen right now josh you were arrested because you showed up on campus at a catholic school for saying that men and women are different we overstated that? No, that's exactly what happened. Female students complained to me and they said they were concerned because males were using their washrooms. This turned into a debate at the school and I stated my opinion on it and I used scripture to back that up and they removed me from the building for the remainder of the year and when I attempted to attend class I was arrested and charged. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow and you need to have fossil fuel backup to make up the gap. Well why aren't we implementing renewable technology? The largest solar farm in the UK was built in six weeks. But it's not going to produce any energy at night. That's the problem with renewables, is that they don't provide the base load that you need. We already have the capacity to provide so much of our energy from renewables without any, any technology needed for storage solutions. But where is this coming from? Because when the wind doesn't blow, when we had really cold days, we were reliant on importing from the EU on coal and on gas. How are we going to replace that in the short term? Quite frankly, I'm not a scientist. What I am 
I'm doing is listening to what all the experts are saying. We're living in this insane world where the experts aren't being listened to. Because we can't do it tomorrow, what are we going to do in terms of transport? That we still need petrol for cars and we need diesel for lorries. How are we going to get goods into supermarkets without this? Quite frankly, I'm not a scientist. I have 45 years in power generation and transmission. I'm an engineer and designed and built in the field nuclear, gas cogeneration, coal, solar, and wind power plants. This guy is absolutely correct. Who the hell are these experts she's listening to? Really good at complaining about stuff, pointing out the obvious problems, but has no solutions and doesn't make any effort for any solutions. And she doesn't even have the intelligence to come up with the solutions. Yet here she is on national television, trying to tell everyone else what should be done when she doesn't even understand it herself. Hilarious. <laughs>